Hello, everybody. That's right. I'm not inside Little Blue. <laughs> I know it looks a lot like Little Blue, too. Except, if, if you're really observant, you're going to notice it's different. The interior has some of the same components, but the layout is actually different. And um, almost like a mirror from Little Blue, too which we're going to talk about um, in a later video. But um, we are actually broadcasting on my way home from inside Rusty Iron Van, who has undergone a transformation to become an emergency shelter for me. Um, I was hoping to actually start um, living in this van uh, on Wednesday, but it looks like I might just go ahead and um, start on next Monday, next week, since I have my kids this weekend, and uh, there's some other stuff going on around the house. Um, Nick is planning on coming by today, although I don't know if he's going to make it or not, because it's uh, pouring rain. I don't know if you can see outside. If the um, voice lags on it, that's what's going on. His camera's having a hard time uh, keeping up when it's a low light situation. I know it doesn't look like it's low light, but it's dark, rainy, and I just wanted to update you guys on what's happening. Uh, the other day I finished filming the um, emergency van build and uh, showed people how you could eventually, I mean, you could essentially uh, convert a van to become a survivable shelter with um, cooking capabilities and a um, nice sleeping arrangement for probably under $40 and you can do it in minutes. And then um, after I filmed that, I also did a segment on uh, cooking to show the, um, the simple inverter cooking system. You know, like if you didn't know what you were doing and you just needed to hook something up to cook real fast on an emergency basis. But of course, we're not going to leave it at that, even though I'm not really planning on full-time living in this van. I'm, I'm mostly using it for emergency basis, but since I have the items, the extra items, and the knowledge, I thought I'd share it with you guys. So what we've been doing, and, and will continue to do here, is upgrade Rusty Iron Van to turn it from emergency survival shelter to either a leisure self camper van, minivan camper, or, you know, a tiny house on wheels. And what that means is instead of just having the basics for survival, we're going to try to build in a little bit of comfort and um, things to make it more like home versus just um, living in a van because you're homeless. So that means adding things like... Um, cell phone chargers, tablet chargers, uh, a kitchenette, you know, and uh, maybe even a bathroom, as well as a curtain, as you can see here, for our privacy. So, stay tuned for some exciting builds. Um, truly, if you were doing all this and you had the components available, you could do the build in one day. Uh, most of what you're going to see had been done for Little Blue 1 and then transported to Little Blue 2. Um, I have made a couple modifications based on um, experience, you know, field use and what actually happened. And that's why you're seeing like the mirror image of Little Blue 2 inside um, Rusty Iron Van. Essentially, I made it so that the um, drawers and whatnot are on this driver's side instead of on the opposite side. And the reason for that is evident here when I turn the camera, you can see, I don't know if you can see here, but you can see um, out the uh, driver's blind, so blind spot. So the right hand side there, that side right there, is normally blocked by um, the cabinets and whatnot, the drawers. But now I've left it completely open. And that's a safety issue that um, 
comes from seeing what happens when you put the cabinet somewhere on the other side. So right now I've got to try to work out some kind of load balancing so that the van isn't lopsided, you know, heavy on the driver's side and too light on the other side. So I've got some plans in mind on, on how to fix that. And I'll be sharing it with you in a future video. But for now, know that uh, those of you who missed the vanning videos, you can start seeing them again. Um, mostly for part-time living. I'm planning on kind of living in the van five days a week, four or five days a week while I work. Basically just using it to sleep and uh, maybe film some segments for you guys for survival, urban survival. Um, cheap tips and uh, things that i picked up over the years as well as um, from all the different van builds. So this particular van build is, um, like I said, going to be extremely cheap because we don't have to waste money on things that we know we don't need. And um, I'm going to show you how to get things kind of for free or, or extremely cheap. So far, you know, if, if you were building everything and you had your own bed, uh, the cost is very minimal. Just uh, basically the price that you would pay for an inverter. And I'm going to show you how to um, try to set up an inverter cooking system, um, even if you don't have a house battery system. I mean, like right now, I, you know, in the previous video, I showed how to cook with the inverter, but you're still having to go outside to cook. And on a day like today, where it's pouring rain, I don't think anyone would want to go outside and cook in the rain. So we're going to show you how to how to set up the inverter cooking system to cook off the vehicle's battery and do it while you're driving, so that you can save basically time as well as gasoline because you're spending the gas driving anyways. And you had the benefit of cooking inside the vehicle um, using the rice cooker. I, you know, I've, those of you who have watched this, the Living in a Van series and the build on Little Blue 2 probably have an idea of how it would be done. But I have come up with some modifications that I think will make the system even more useful and um, a little bit safer. So stay tuned for those videos. In the meantime, I hope your day is going well. Um, better mine. Nick had said uh, he was going to try to come today at about 5 p.m. to um, work on Little Blue 2, but I'm looking at this rain, and I don't think he's going to show up. It's, like, really bad. But I'll head back to Walter's house to wait for Nick to see what, if he does show up, um, because if we can get Little Blue 2 working, then I'll really be happy, you know. This particular van, I may end up having it looked at as well. Um, maybe just take it to the mechanic and see what it would take to try to fix it and how much it would cost. Uh, because it was fixing, you know, if it, if it does run, then I'd have two decent vehicles. Right now I have two vehicles, and neither one run. So uh, I definitely don't want to um, spend a lot of money fixing either vehicles. But at the same time, if it can be done and it's not too bad, uh, I will do it. You know, especially if I'm able to live in this vehicle and divert some of the money that would normally go to gas. I figure I should be able to save like 200 to 300 dollars more each month that could apply towards repair or saving towards another vehicle altogether. So that remains to be seen. Now, living in the van could be more expensive. It depends on what happens with the food situation. And I wanted to point that out, you know, um, a lot of you were kind of appalled that I'm spending three to four hundred dollars a month driving you know, in gasoline just to drive 40 miles each day. Um, 40, that's 200 miles a week, and I'm going through a full tank. So, I'm going through more than a full tank. I'm going through about 80 to 100 dollars worth of gas each week. That's very expensive, but when you live in the van, you save that. You know, when you live near where you work, you would save all that gasoline money. But the problem becomes this. You have to drive around a lot, like to shower and to cook food and to eat and whatnot. You're going to burn gasoline. So it remains to be seen whether or not I'm actually going to save money or not. But I think I will. I think at the minimum I should save at least $200 a month just from doing that. And that's not doing it every day, but doing it um, four or five days a week. 
and it could be a strategy for those of you who are um, finding that you, you're in a job that doesn't pay enough you know, for you to have extra money. But if you can save yourself two to four hundred dollars a month just in gasoline fees, that adds up. You know, it's like four or five thousand dollars a year. So, just a strategy for saving money. And um, the other thing is having a van like this now. I feel I can go camping and whatnot, especially once I get it fixed. If I do end up getting it fixed, so that um, it's no longer in limp mode and working correctly. Right now the vehicle seems to be running okay. I did, I do have it running with the heat. I, well, I've got the heat off right now, but I had the heater blower blowing hot air at me, so it's like driving in a sauna. <laughs> but it keeps it from overheating. Right now I'm looking at it, the the fan is turned off, and they, but you know, I still have it on um, 80 air vents, so air blowing hot air at me, but um, the temperature gauge is saying that it's, it's still below medium, so. Doesn't seem like it's overheating. Of course, I've been running it with the AC and it doesn't overheat. So I don't know what's up with this thing. But typically in the morning now, I run it with the heater on to try to keep um, the system from overheating by uh, blowing the heat at me, you know, to cool the vehicle down. And at, at usually in the afternoon, I um, drive with the AC on just to see how. I know it's, it's, people say that's bad, but I'm trying to see if the system will overheat. And it seems like I can run the AC all the way home. It doesn't overheat, so I don't know what's up. But it has overheated at least twice in the morning. So, Anyhow, this video is going on and on, and I'm rambling. But um, for those of you who enjoy the van videos, uh, get ready for some more quick builds, uh, some more tips. And uh, you get to um, benefit from all the trial and error that I've had um, basically building and living in. I think five or six different vans, vehicles. That doesn't even count the part-time ones that I built. So a lot of what I'm building will be um, very cheap because hopefully um, we're not gonna make the same mistakes we made before. And I'm, me, myself, as well as the viewers will benefit from um, field experience, knowing what works and what doesn't. You know, there's a lot of uh, people have theories on what works and what doesn't, but until it's um, field tested, you really don't know. Like I know a lot of people say I should not be using um, 120 volt um, light switch as my switch to connect uh, battery systems. Um, but that's what I'm planning on doing again because I did it in a little blue tune and it worked fine. When I had a 12 volt switch that was rated at I think 30 amps, it still melted. So, you know, I'm gonna go with the 120 volt because I went through three different switches and um, also transport or transpose the um, components that were used as part of that system's um, fuse system, fusible link for the battery system. I'm going to transport it or transpose it into um, Rusty Iron Man. So expect Rusty Iron Man to look somewhat similar to Little Blue 2 but for obvious differences like in size and you can see on some of the builds there are big differences. Um, the main thing is uh, we lose the second kitchenette and additional storage. Although I'm thinking of um, adding some storage back and making it a really nice van to live in. Uh, so those of you who have a um, short van like this one, like the Caravan or the Voyager, um, can build something like this. I, I don't think there's enough room in the back for a uh, kitchenette unless you make it below the bed. but there's enough room, I think, for almost everything else that was inside the blue tube. But um, this time I'm going to try to do some improvements. So stay tuned. Thank you for joining me. Take care, everybody. I hope you're having a great day. Take care now.